Greetings everyone, and welcome to part two of the assembly of Zarin Isaac's new kick-ass computer. Okay, without any further ado, let's continue today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. Okay, so we're going to pull back a bit here, and we're going to put this in here. Okay, so let's move it over. Yeah. Now, I think the motherboard... Ah, did, it, did they not give us screws? <laughs> they didn't give us screws, did they? They gave us a back panel with no... Oh, it actually does have labeling on it, but it's bloody hard to read. Um, no stickers, no screws, no nothing. Okay, well, fortunately I actually do have screws for the case. So we'll uh, go grab those right now. I'll go grab the case fan on there too. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know why I took this out. I think I just assumed I'd be using a new case. It's even one of the RAM boxes here. And we'll just put all our screws in there. So these are just standard uh, Phillips head metric screws. Yeah, you can see that really well. Well, they're used for various components in a computer like this. All right, good to go. Discharge, discharge, discharge. And I uh, want to put this in. Angle it slightly like that. Line up the... I guess I should put the... Yeah, I guess I should put the back panel on first. Damn it. Sorry, take it out again. How am I gonna do this? Okay. Ugh. There we go. Okay. We gotta put this on first. Okay. Now these are pretty easy to put on. They basically just snap in place. <laughs> Where you run into difficulty is getting them off again. Getting them off is a bitch. And uh, yeah, good luck getting them off without destroying them essentially. Okay, so. Go this way. This goes right. Should just snap right into place here. And watch your fingers because the edges are sharp. That's. There we go. Done. Easy peasy. Okay, now we put the motherboard in. Okay, so. these sticky outy things that I'm guessing fit into various there we go. Alright, so then just make sure you can actually see the, the screw holes inside. Um, so you just want to make sure that everything's nicely aligned. Get your trusty Phillips head and just start just start screwing. Make sure everything is lined up properly. It's pretty easy to uh, to do. It's just a little awkward to reach some of the sections there. And it's all metric screws as well, which means that they uh, once you get them lined up, they just they just twist right in. Without uh, too much hassle. See what I mean? Ah, yeah, that's great. See what I mean? Though it's a little awkward to reach some of the sections. Ultimately what I want to do is actually get a full tower case and a full ATX board. Um, I'll sort of give you a little little uh, preview here of what my, what my goals are as far as computers go. Ultimately I want this to be the secondary computer that I'll use primarily for uh, capturing and more sort of uh, you know mundane tasks that I can just sort of have running on this system while I'm using the other main computer to do all the real work. So ultimately what I'd like to do at this stage, what I'm looking at is, uh, well I guess we'll, we'll say this is the dream rather than the plan. Get a six core system in a full tower case with a full ATX board, lots of extra slots, room for hard drives and the whole 
kit and caboodle and uh, have that as the main work system and then have this one sort of relegated to more mundane tasks like capturing video 24 7 and things like that because uh, as I know I've shown you guys before I have like a lot of old 8 millimeter and Hi8 and VHS videos from my past that I'd really like to uh, capture and for example do more Multimedia Chronicles retro episodes and it's, it would just be so much simpler to have a computer that I could just dedicate solely to the purposes of capturing day in day out you know so so that'd be great so ultimately the idea now, now given how cheap I was able to get all these parts I mean this whole system all the parts and everything uh, coupled with using reusing parts from the old system only cost about 500 bucks now considering all that it can do that's pretty freaking amazing you know that is that is an amazing uh, price okay so uh, hard drives need some hard drives here and yeah not the least of which is this serial ATA hard drive which is Actually, my first experience with Serial ATA, and I'm really looking forward to it, because everybody tells me that it's a lot faster than IDE. What the hell? How do you open this damn thing? Uh, oh, that's great. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> yeah, that worked well. Let's use the box cutter, shall we? All right. Let's, uh, just slice into it here. Yeah, it doesn't have to be fancy because I don't really need the, I'm not really going to be keeping this case for anything, so I'm going to get to the darn hard drive. Try not to slice open my leg in the process. Okay, that should be nicely. Yeah, come on. There we go. Alright, discharge, discharge. Alright, here we go. Okay, so this is going to be the system drive. The reason I wanted this to be the system drive is just because, well, it's serial ATA, so it'd be a lot faster. And, uh, you know, it is not a bad thing to have your fastest hard drive as your system drive. This means, you know, it's going to boot up a lot faster and just generally uh, be a lot easier. <laughs> Desiccant, do not eat. Also known as silica gel. See that with electronics components. Okay, so we do not appear to have any screws again. Well, fortunately, I have spare screws. I'll be right back. Hmm. Don't have spare screws. Oh, wait a minute. Ah, yes. Good old Compaq. Good old Compaq. Thinking ahead. Where is it? Yeah, here we are. Check this out. Screws. Screws on the case in the front because they know that you're probably going to need them at some point. So I'm just going to take four of these out here, and then we can use these for the hard drive. Yeah, they want to come out, of course. Yeah, I thought that was quite nice and compact to include those. Okay, and we'll just put them here. How many do we need? We need four? Do we need four? Um, actually, Take a look on this hard drive, and uh, that's exactly where we need to put these screws. Uh, okay, gotcha. Okay. Easy peasy. Uh, I think I'm running low on tape, so we might have to cut this part short, and then we'll continue in the next part. Ugh. This part's really exciting. Is oh, this is great. Yeah, they're in there so tight, I can't actually get them out. Come on. Might I just take this opportunity to say how much I hate Phillips head? A lot of people are under the misconception that Phillips head is the best because it's the star, and it's like oh, but it's a star shape, and you get like more of a grip on it than anything else. No, you don't, because all the little prongs of the star are so easy to strip and kill so that the, uh, come on, all right, screw it, I'll just get this one, there we go. Whereas you take a look at something like a, a uh, Roberts, Robertson, 
which is a um, which is the square shape. Now the Robertson is actually the best because you don't have those dinky little prongs that can be destroyed. You have the square, which has full. Um, which has like uh, way more, I don't know, uh, support on each side, I guess you could say. So what you do here is you just put the uh, screw in the side of the hard drive. Now, some cases actually require that you screw the, uh, uh, the hard drive into the bay. With uh, these compact cases, it's actually a little cooler because uh, you put the screws in, you just put the screws into the hard drive and the screws act as a, a sort of a latch or a nub that then clicks into place. So you don't actually have to screw the hard drive into the case at all. It just sort of clicks into place once you have the screws um, in position on the actual hard drive, which is pretty cool. So, all right. So I think I'm gonna uh, go to another tape. So we'll call this the end of part two, and I'll see you guys in part three. All right. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Sayonara.